This copyrighted broadcast is presented by Authority of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Cincinnati Reds Incorporated. Joe, a couple of wins in a row against the Chicago Cubs. Now a series against the Cardinals. It'll close out this homestand. And, of course, precedes what has to be considered the most important road trip coming up next Tuesday night for the Reds so far this season. And uh, I don't know, maybe you would disagree, but I think it would be mighty important now to start building up some momentum before we move into Candlestick. Well, Marty, it's always nice to build up momentum regardless of where you're going. And this so happens that we are going to Candlestick, and they seem to have just a little bit going out there you know but really uh, you know you think of the Cardinals and guys we talk about them and uh, to this point a very disappointing season for St. Louis but you always have to respect the opposition and certainly we'll worry about tonight's game and then tomorrow night and tomorrow afternoon rather and Sunday and then when we get to candlestick we'll worry about that but it'd be nice to go out there with a, say a five game winning streak and Tom has pitched super baseball and his streak of six straight a 162 earned run average in that streak and he has really come on as everyone knows and his last time out of I guess you would call it a finesse game and he's had a lot of rest so he should be pumping pretty good tonight. Well, he's set to go to deal to the leadoff batter, Lou Brock. The first pitch and off-speed pitch is down low for a ball, and this game is underway. Seaver, 7-4 by way of record with a 3.52 earned run average. Here's a grounder wide of first, backhanded by Dreesen. Danny waves Seaver away. He'll beat Brock to the bag. One out. I'll bring up Gary Templeton to shortstop, and... In the wake of, as Joe pointed out, a very disappointing season for the Cardinals as a team, they are 17 under 500 at 23 and 40. It has been a very mysterious, mystifying, disappointing year personally for this young man right here. Templeton batting only 235 with 13 RBIs, but I guess the thing that is even more surprising than that is the fact that he's committed 20 errors at shortstop this season and certainly not playing like the Gary Templeton that everybody saw around the National League last year. He grounds a first pitch foul. Brock has bounced to first. Templeton is at the plate. A strike count on the switch hitting shortstop and center fielder George Hendrick now moving to the St. Louis on deck circle. Seaver rocks to the windup. He pitches, and Templeton swings and misses, and quickly falls behind at 0-2. This is the 15th start of the season for Tom. He has three complete games, and his last two outings have resulted in complete game efforts. Low and outside a ball. He beat the Cardinals in going the distance two starts ago, 2-1, to one, and then came up with a rude going performance to beat the Pittsburgh Pirates last weekend in Pittsburgh. Two balls and two strikes. Outfield playing Templeton to hit the other way. Seaver with a break-even pitch, and Gary shoots it down the left field line. Foster moving back and toward the foul line, and he'll not have a play. Ball back up into the seats. The Reds defensively tonight go with Dreesen at first base, Morgan at second, Concepcion at short, Rose at third, Foster in left field, Geronimo in center, and Griffey in right. Donnie Warner behind the plate. Holding two and two count on Gary Templeton. Seaver checking in with Warner for the sign. He kicks and he fires, and that's bounced towards short. Concepcion charges, has it. Quick running throw. Got him at first base. Two down. Now, you don't fool around on anything hit on the ground when this young man is at the plate because he can flat run. Davey charged the big hopper and threw on the run to get Templeton by a couple of steps at first base. Don't forget, Banner Day is coming up at Riverfront three weeks from tonight. Now's the time to start work on your banner so you can enter it in the Reds' banner parade between games of the Reds-Giants doubleheader. If you need information, just call the Reds' office. Hendrick, the two-out batter, swings and fouls at the plate. George, of course, started out the season with the San Diego Padres just a couple of weeks ago, came over to the Cardinals for right-handed pitcher Eric Rasmussen. Hendrick hitting 223. Five homers, 17 runs batted in. 
Seaver has retired Brock and Templeton on ground balls, and he throws a strike one pitch to Hendrick. He swings and misses at a pitch down and away, a breaking ball that was well out of the strike zone, and Hendrick had obviously made his mind up. He was going after the pitch and is down two strikes. Reds are 12 over 500 as they begin the series. They've won 37 and lost 25. The pitch blowing outside a ball. Trailing the Giants by two and a half games. The Reds, of course, with the exhibition game at Indianapolis last night, which they beat their AAA Farm Club 8-5. The Giants played and won, so add a half game onto that giant lead. Here's a ground ball to second. Morgan makes a pickup, throws him out, and Seaver enjoys a 1-2-3 first inning. Cardinals are out in order and after a half inning of play. St. Louis nothing, and the Reds are coming to bat. Well, tonight's game starts off a big weekend series for the Reds and the Cardinals here at Riverfront. There's a 2-15 ball game tomorrow afternoon, and then on Sunday, the homestand winds up on Ken Griffey poster day. Every guy and gal, 21 and under, will get a free two-foot by three-foot full-color action poster of the Red Star right fielder. It's a terrific souvenir for collectors. Be on hand. Plenty of seats are available for tomorrow and Sunday, and for your convenience, the Red Stadium ticket office opens at 9 a.m. both days. John Denny, one of the two big horses in this Cardinal pitching rotation, the other, of course, being Bob Forsh. Denny owns a 6-4 and four record with a 267 earned run average with four complete games or seven complete games and 14 starts. And one of those rude-going performances came against Cincinnati 10 days ago at Bush Stadium in St. Louis when he allowed the Reds five hits and one run, the Cardinals posting a 4-1 to victory. Now John Denny, not an easy customer to contend with most of the time. And in four lifetime decisions against the Reds, he owns three wins. Pete Rose will start it off. Pete batting 270, is homered four times, has 19 RBIs. A pitch to him just inside a fastball. Kenny Reed's playing wide of the bag at third and a bit in for Rose, who takes a breaking pitch low, and Denny falls behind to Pete. Two balls and no strikes. Ken Griffey and Joe Morgan to follow, and hopefully more here in the first. Pitch on the way. Pete swings, bounces first base side. That's going to be a fair ball. Took an extremely high hop, but played by Hernandez, and he gets a put out. One down. As Griffey comes to the plate, we'll check out the Cardinals defensively for you. It's Hernandez at first with Phillips at second, Templeton at short, Reitz at third. Brock in left, Hendrick in center, Morales in right, and Simmons behind the plate. One gone, no score. We're in the Bottom of the first. Griffey takes it low and inside. Kenny continues to lead the National League in batting with a 328 mark and also in total base hits with 83. Denny's 1-0 to him. That's below the knees and Denny falling behind to Griffey 2-0 exactly as he did to Pete Rose before Rose hit that 2-0 pitch on a ground out to first base. Denny kicks and fires. Griffey takes a slow curve that's in for a strike. Terry Tata, our plate umpire. At first, Paul Pryor. At second, Ed Vargo. And at third base, Charlie Williams. Denny ready with a 2-1 pitch. Griffey swings, bounces it hard on one hop back to the mound, and the pitcher throws him out. Kenny with a hard one hopper right back to Denny. Oh, with two out and nothing going on for Cincinnati, here's Joe Morgan. Looks like this guy has finally started to battle back after a very slow start. Saw his batting average dip into the 230s. Morgan has jumped it up to 258 and is hit safely in six consecutive games. He takes a high breaking ball. He went to bat one time in Indianapolis last night and hammered a long two-run home run in the first inning to right center. Check swing, ball two, breaking ball in the dirt. Uh, Simmons runs out in front of the plate to pick it up and deliver it on back to the mound. Denny trying to do what Sieber did in the top of the inning, and that's retired the side one, two, three. Morgan bounces foul. That will carry on over toward the Cincinnati dugout. 
So to the red second baseman, two balls and one strike. Reds have been getting some excellent pitching despite losing last Monday night's game to the Chicago Cubs. The pitching was good throughout the series. There's ball three. Of course, winning Tuesday night's game, one nothing, and coming back behind the pitching of Sarmiento, Tomlin, and Bear to defeat the Cubs 3-1 to one in the afternoon wrap-up on Wednesday. There's ball four. Then he misses with two high and away fastballs to issue a two-out walk to Morgan and keep the inning going for George Foster. Foster batting 313 with 14 home runs and 48 RBIs. That latter figure good enough to continue to lead the National League and also is a leader in runs scored with a total of 43. So Morgan draws a two-out walk. And Mr. Denny will go to work on Mr. Foster. The stretch and the pitch. Foster bounces to third, played on the hop by Reitz. He'll go to first with his throw, and that's the inning. For the Reds, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on. At the end of one complete in this series opener with the Cardinals, Cincinnati nothing and St. Louis nothing. At the end of one inning of play at Riverfront Stadium, no score, and the Cardinals will be coming with the middle third of their batting order against Tom Seaver, led by Ted Simmons, then Keith Hernandez, and Jerry Morales. Now Baltimore and Oakland getting ready to play a single game in Baltimore tonight. Rick Langford against Dennis Martinez. Interesting sidelight to that game. The Orioles playing the game under protest for possible violations regarding the 25-man limit of Oakland. Well, the first pitch misses low and away to Simmons. Ted batting 316. He's having a fine year with his Cardinal club, as he normally does. He swings and grounds one slowly to shortstop. Davey has it on the bounce, throwing first base. One down. So the first four Cardinal batters have been retired on ground balls to the infield. One to first, two to shortstop, and one to second. Here's a left-handed batting first baseman, Keith Hernandez. Hernandez hitting 274, has driven in 30 runs, has hit five homers. Against Cincinnati pitching in the two-game set in St. Louis. Had a base hit in five trips. Pitches in the dirt for a ball. Hernandez takes a strike on the outside edge, and it's even to him at one and one. Seaver delivers, and it's slow for a ball. Two balls and one strike on Hernandez. And both the Giants and the Dodgers going extremely well right now. L.A. has chalked up six wins in a row. The Giants have recorded six victories in a row also. There's a call strike, and it's 2-2 now. And Cincinnati, having won a modest two straight, would like to get involved in a long winning streak. Now would be an excellent time to start it off. There's ball three, low and outside. So Seaver a full count on Hernandez. We pointed out the Reds two and a half behind the Giants and two and a half games in front of third place Los Angeles. Dodgers are five back of San Francisco. Ball four inside and low, and Hernandez becomes the first Cardinal base runner as he works Seaver for a one-out second inning walk. That'll bring up right fielder Jerry Morales. Morales hitting 238, and thus far he has been a big disappointment for the Cardinals. He's hit three home runs and has driven in 28 runs, and simply been a matter of everything that possibly could go wrong has gone wrong for St. Louis. Sieber delivers Morales a taken strike, a fastball. I'm talking to Coach Jack Kroll earlier tonight, who was an interim manager with his club for a few games until Kenny Boyer took over after Vern Rapp was fired, and he said as soon as it looks like they've got things turned around for the better, all of a sudden something else crops up and they've got the same problem again. Werner calling for a pitch out, but Hernandez not doing anything at first base. But a long, long way to go. The Cardinals have played 63 ball games, so 99 more to go, and you've seen strange things happen in a much shorter span of time than that, I'm sure. 
Seaver throws to first and Hernandez is back. One out, one on here in the second. No score. The Reds and the Cardinals. Cincinnati infield a double play dap. This time again drives Hernandez with a throw to first base. Now the long pause at the belt. The runner goes. Pitch is swung on and missed. Werner's throw down to second and it goes through Morgan and on into center field. Here comes Hernandez on to third base. Donnie Werner bouncing one in front of second. And Morgan not able to handle it on the bounce as they credit Hernandez with a stolen base and charge a throwing error to Don Werner. So the Cardinals put a runner over at third base on a steal and an error. Hernandez with his fourth stolen base of the season and that will bring the Cincinnati infield in, especially the right side of Dreesen and Morgan trying to cut off Hernandez at the plate should he try and score on anything hit on the ground by Morales. Seaver glances to third as he works from the full windup. He sends in the one-two pitch. Morales strikes out swinging. Well, Tom coming with a high hardwood. Make Jerry Morales his first strikeout victim and that'll bring up third baseman Kenny Reitz. Now we'd like to send along our congratulations and best wishes to all the high school baseball players in the greater Cincinnati area. We'll be competing tomorrow morning in the annual East-West All-Star Baseball game. The game takes place at 10 o'clock out at St. Xavier High School. Ball is inside. Maybe Concepcion playing a very deep shortstop for Ken Reitz. He swings and misses at a pitch out away from him. Reitz, he hitting... 257. Has Hernandez at third base with two away. Check swing foul ball. That'll go to the Cincinnati dugout. Now Seaver trying to leave Hernandez stranded at third came up with a big strikeout of Jerry Morales. And owns a count advantage here against Reitz at ball one and strike two. Okay, the right-hander ready to go to work again. He winds and he pitches, and Reitz takes it just high and outside, two and two. Sieber has been, in a word, magnificent in this six-game winning streak of his, at one time a one and four record that has been turned into a seven and four mark. As Joe mentioned earlier, during the winning streak, Tom has posted a 162 earned run average, giving up nine earned runs in 49 and two-thirds innings of pitching, and that's not bad. Reed swings at a high fastball and fouls it back. Seaver's victories have come against Montreal. He's twice beaten San Diego, Atlanta, the Cardinals, and Houston. Or Pittsburgh. Two balls, two strikes. Two out. Scoreless here in the second with the Cardinals having Keith Hernandez down at third base. Seaver wields and deals and misses with a high breaking ball. Well, if he loses Reitz, he'll be working to second baseman Mike Phillips. Three balls and two strikes as a right-handed batter levels a bat and waits. A pitch on the way. Struck him out or did he? No, could not hang on to the foul tip. Donnie Warner as the ball just got off of his glove. So Reitz... Stays alive on a holding three and two count. Outfield playing Reitz pretty much straight away. Sieber back to the plate and Reitz takes it outside. So Tom has issued his second walk of the inning. And the number eight batter in the Cardinal lineup, second baseman Mike Phillips, will step in. Phillips doing a good job in the time that he has been able to get into that Cardinal lineup, hitting 276 with five RBIs. Of course, Mike Tyson at the beginning of the season was the Cardinal second baseman, but Phillips right now hitting almost 30 points higher than Tyson, and so Mike is the one getting the playing time. As Seaver came to the plate, Phillips threw up his hands and called time, so that pitch will not count. Cardinals have him on the corners. Hernandez at third, Reitz at first. 
two away in the inning. Seaver stretches, delivers, Phillips takes it inside, ball one. Cardinals threatening in the second inning. Seaver works to Phillips, who won over the play, just gets the outside corner for a call strike. That game that Seaver beat the Cardinals in back on the 5th of June, 2-1, to one, Mike Phillips reached Tom for a couple of base hits in that game. Phillips swings and fouls this one off just to the right of the plate. Uh, Tom here in the first couple of innings. For the most part, staying out in front of the hitters, although he has issued the walks in the inning to Hernandez and Reitz. He's in front now of Phillips at ball one and strike two, and John Denny is the on-deck batter for St. Louis. Phillips, left-handed batter. Tom taking his time. He checks the runners on the corners and comes to the plate. Phillips hits a broken back ground ball to second. Morgan will throw to first base to get the inning ending out. No runs, no hits, one error with two left. In the middle of inning number two, it's the Reds nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Danny Dreesen heading toward the plate, and he'll be the man who will kick off the second inning for Cincinnati. Dreesen batting 302 with eight homers and 36 RBIs. He'll be followed here in the second by Davy Concepcion and Cesar Geronimo. John Denny allowing a two-out base runner. Morgan a walk in the first inning, but got Foster to ground out to third. He delivers to Dreesen. Fastball in, strike call. Denny delivers. Dreesen takes it inside, one and one. 1977, a rough year for John Denny in terms of pull hamstring muscles. He suffered two, swing and a foul by Dreesen. Suffered one here and then suffered a worse hamstring pull out in Los Angeles, something that, well, it took forever and ever to finally overcome the one he suffered in L.A. because it was much worse than the one he had here in Cincinnati. So far this season has been injury-free. We talked to him in St. Louis, and he said everything was in fine shape as far as that's concerned. He curves Dreesen, but it stays high, and it is even at two balls and two strikes. Pitch. Danny takes another breaking ball, and that's all that Denny, for the most part, has been throwing him is curves and a full count. And Denny, like Sieber, will not walk too many people. Here's a grounder hit to the right side, and Mike Phillips is there to play the ball and throw Dreesen out. One away. Davey Concepcion will now step to the plate. Davey batting 308 with two home runs and 28 RBIs, and Concepcion ranking fourth in the National League in two base hits. He's had 17 this season. Ted Simmons of the Cardinals leads the league with a total of 22 doubles. Davey bluffs a bunt on a low curve. Ball one. Jack Clark of the Giants with 18. Pete Rose also up there among the league leaders in that department. A curve ball is high and inside as Davey leans out away from the pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Denny working quickly. David swings at a fastball away and does not get it. Two and one. And look at Denny's statistics and not hard to understand why his earned run average stands as low as it does at 267. He's given up at 83 hits in 104 and one third innings of pitching. Swing and a foul. Count two balls and two strikes. Not a strikeout pitcher by any means. He's fanned 46 this season. But in terms of walks, he's issued but 26. Seaver is issued but 31 coming into this start in 91 and two-thirds innings. Grounded off the end of the bat slowly towards second. Here's Phillips quick throwing to first base and got him by a half step. 
Well, both outs here in the second have been on ground balls to Mike Phillips at second base. That ground out makes Cesar Geronimo the two out batter. Geronimo batting 245. Three homers and 17 RBI. Cesar did not go to the plate in the two game series in St. Louis. Pitches high for a ball. Did get in once as a late inning defensive replacement, but marking his first trip to the plate this season now against Cardinal pitching. Ball two, two and nothing. Tomorrow afternoon in the 2.15 start, it'll be Bill Bottom against Pete Vukovic. Three balls and no strikes. And when we close out the series on Sunday afternoon, it'll also be the wrap-up to the homestand. Freddie Norman will go against Silvio Martinez. So all three of the Cincinnati pitchers in this series trying to make it eight wins on the year. Geronimo draws a two-out walk. Seaver seven and four. Bottom will go in with a record of seven and one. And Freddie Norman, Sunday afternoon, will carry a record of the mound of seven wins and three losses. Denny like Seaver is now walked to. And he faces catcher Don Werner, batting 163 with nine runs knocked in. Donnie has done an Iron Man's job behind the plate. As Denny throws to first, he has caught every inning of the Reds' last 17 ball games. Geronimo getting a pretty good lead at first, so much so that Denny throws that way again. Dreesen, Concepcion, ground outs, but Geronimo draws a walk. Another throw to first, so Werner is still waiting. To look over John Denny's first pitch, the Cardinal right-hander is thrown over to Keith Hernandez three straight times. Here's a stretch, the pause, and another quick throw to first, and he threw it away. Here comes Geronimo on to second. John Denny going to the well one time too often. Geronimo ending up at second base, and that'll be a throwing error against Denny. Oh, we've had two errors already in the game, and both have been of the throwing variety. Donnie Werner charged with a throwing error. In the top of the inning, he takes a pitch low for ball one. So the Reds have Geronimo at second with two down. Werner takes it off the plate and high, ball two. Tom Seaver on deck. Cardinals could not take advantage of the throwing error in the top of the inning. Seaver was able to wiggle out of a first and third jam. Here's a ball fouled off the end of the bat. Hernandez went to third base with one down, but Seaver struck out Morales, and after walking Reitz, he got Phillips to bounce out to second base. Now Geronimo taking a good lead out at second. As Denny sends a pitch in, and Werner takes a curve high and inside, three and one on the Cincinnati catcher. stretches and pitches curve is in at the knees strike two call some of the fans here not particularly in agreement with Terry Tata's call but a full count nevertheless here's a payoff pitch and that's bounced to third here's Reitz with a ball he'll go to first and that's the inning so the numbers for Cincinnati in the second no runs no hits an error with a man left on base and at the end of two complete the Reds nothing and the Cardinals nothing in the third inning for the St. Louis Cardinals, pitcher John Denny will lead it off against Tom Seaver and here to call the play-by-play -play for you, Joe Nuxall. All right, Marty, Denny with a 117 batting average. John, or 177 batting average. He's had six hits in 34 times up this year. Tom has struck out one walk, two. Delivers to Denny and the bunt attempt is missed, strike one. Cardinals and the Reds splitting the two-game series at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. 0-1 delivery. Swung on and missed, and quickly Seaver in front, 0-2. 
Denny winning the Cardinals game over there, and of course, Seaver winning the Reds game. 0 oh, 2 the count. Seaver winds and the pitch. Missing outside with a slider. One ball, two strikes. Lou Brock on deck, and then it'll be Gary Templeton. Seaver back to the plate. Denny swings. Did he go far enough? And Terry Tata says so. The plate umpire. So that's strikeout number two for Tom Seaver. One away, and Lou Brock the batter. Brock bounced to Danny Dreesen wide to first base in the first inning leading off the game. And you talk about reasons for the Cardinals problems. I guess you might throw Lou Brock in. But Lou Brock has scored just 17 runs this year hitting 217. Seaver delivers and Brock swings and fouls. Warner hangs the sign and the 0 1 delivery. That's under the knees of the ball, 1 and 1. Seaver shakes off the sign from Warner and the 1 1 on the way. Outside as Tom takes something off the fastball, 2 and 1. Well, the Reds have signed three more of their draft picks. 2 1 delivery. Swung on, bounce to Morgan. Joe has it. On to Dreesen. Two away. <laughs> two down. Gary Templeton, the better. The three, the Reds sign. Latest to sign, number 13 pick Byron Jackson, an 18 year old right handed pitcher from Wichita Falls, Texas. Number 20 draft pick James Taylor, an 18 year old catcher from Charlotte, North Carolina. Pitch to Templeton and that swung on and missed. And the third one, he was a number nine, 29 draft picks, Alex Neely, 20 year old right handed pitcher from Enid, Oklahoma. The 0 1 pitch, Templeton swings and fouls and quickly, Seaver in front 0 2. Tom has struck out two, walk two, both walks coming in the second inning to Hernandez and Reitz. 0-2 pitch. Templeton swings on it and fouls. Cardinals have won 23 and lost 40. They're playing their 64th game. The Reds playing number 63. Cardinals last year beat the Reds on the season series seven games to five. Again the 0-2 pitch that swung on and hit to left field Foster going back and a step onto the warning track makes the play. Other Cardinals out in order here in the seventh in the third inning nothing across and at the middle of inning number three Cardinals nothing Reds nothing. For the Reds in the bottom half of the third it'll be Tom Seaver to lead it off then Pete Rose and Ken Griffey. Tom with a 179 batting average. He has five hits and 28 times up. Has driven in two runs and Seaver owns one double. Denny has not struck out anyone. Has walked two. Walked Morgan with two out in the first inning. Walked Geronimo with two out in the second. John Denny six and four. On the year, ready to work to Tom Seaver. A wind in the pitch. Seaver takes it low and outside the ball. Then in the game against the Reds in St. Louis on June the 6th, there's a strike on the outside corner, one and one. A lot of the Reds just five hits. No one in the game had two for the Reds. Ball two low and outside. Joe Morgan had one. Danny Dreesen had one to drive in the one Cincinnati run. Two one deliveries. Curve for a called strike. Count evens two and two. And Dave Collins had one as a pinch hitter. All right, the two two. Curve swung on and missed, and Denny has his first strikeout. Pete Rose, the batter. 
Rose bounced to Hernandez at first base leading off the game for the Reds. Pete's batting average 270. With four home runs, 19 RBIs, 17 doubles, and three triples. Benny working quickly delivers and Rose takes it low and inside a ball. One-0 pitch swung on. That's bounced to Phillips, charging at second. Goes on to Hernandez, two away. Two down. Ken Griffey steps in. Kenny bounced hard back to the mound in the first inning. Denny reaching off to his right to pick it off and throw Griff out. Two outs. Base is empty. Benny delivers. Griffey takes a fastball through the heart of the plate to strike. Talking about last year when the Cardinals beat the Reds on the season series 7-5. All one pitch inside as Griffey skips back. One and one. That was the first time since 1968 that the Cardinals had won a season series from the Reds. One one delivery. Swung on, bounced over the mound near second base. Templeton has it. Quick throwing to Hernandez got him. Now the Reds out in order, and we have yet to hit a ball out of the infield in the first three innings against John Denny. Nothing across, and after three, Reds nothing, Cardinals nothing. Seaver ready to go to work to George Hendrick. He winds and delivers the first pitch. Hendrick swings and misses. The pitch down and in. Tom turning the ball over quite a bit again tonight. He still seems to have better velocity than he did in Pittsburgh. The pitch slider outside and the count evens one and one. One one pitch. Hendricks takes breaking ball low and outside two balls to strike. Two one delivery Hendricks check swing foul and that into the seats just to the right of the screen. Apparently everyone all right down there. Well, the count even at two balls two strikes to George Hendrick. Outfield. Shading him around to the right. 2-2 delivery. Swung on and missed. Got him with a good high fastball. Third strikeout for Tom. One away and Ted Simmons the better. Well, you go back to that game in St. Louis that Tom beat the Cardinals in and he just absolutely blew five people away in the last two innings. Striking out the side in the ninth. And one of them Ted Simmons. He's at the plate now. Switch hitter. The pitch. Strike call. Simmons a 316 batting average. Six home runs. 26 RBIs. Ted has had 22 doubles. All one pitch. Curveball. And that's outside. One and one. Cardinals tomorrow afternoon. Sunday afternoon. The Reds off Monday. Take off Monday afternoon for San, San Francisco to open a 10 game road trip. Three with the Giants, three with the Dodgers, four in Houston. 1 1. Delivery is just low, and I think Tom wanted that one. Now it goes two balls, one strike. Keith Hernandez, the on deck batter. Sabres 2 1 delivery. Swung on, a very high pop. That'll come back and out of play. Dropping just in front of us. Not even two and two to Ted Simmons. Ted away from the plate now. Steps back in. And Seaver winds and the two two. Breaking ball swung on and hit to center field. Geronimo there waiting on it, and Cesar has it for out number two. And that'll bring Keith Hernandez to the plate. Hernandez walked in the second inning with one out, stole second, and moved to third on the throwing arrow by Don Warner. The ball going on in the center field, but was left there as 
Morales struck out. Reeves walked and Phillips bounced to Morgan. Heath a 274 batting average. Seaver delivers high with a fastball. Read Tom's lips every time he makes a bad pitch. He kind of talks to himself. 1 0 pitch outside and off the mid of Don Warner. 2 0. Tom says, Come on, Tom. Now the 2 0. Hernandez swings, ground ball. Morgan has it off to his left. Throwing to Dries and Gotti. Joe, a good play, a step on the outfield turf to pick it off, one handed, moving to his left, and throws Hernandez out easily, and that's the inning. Well, we got a real pitchers battle going here at Riverfront tonight through the first three and a half innings. There's not been a base hit, and John Denny will be facing in the fourth inning Joe Morgan, George Foster, and Danny Dreesen. Morgan walked in the first inning with two out. Joe, a six game hitting streak. That streak, Joe has had 10 hits in 23 times to the plate, good for a 435 earned run, or batting average, and his batting average up to 258 now. John Denny, ready to go to work. He has struck out one, walked two, the pitch. Morgan takes an off speed pitch up high, a ball. Well, the play that Morgan made on Hernandez, the only ball that looked like a base hit to this point. Morgan takes ball two high and outside. Then he did make a good play on Ken Griffey in the first inning and a hard one bouncer back to the mound. 2-0 delivery. Morgan takes ball three low and inside. So good Joe on here leading off the inning. Then he with a good move, though. Tough to steal on him. See if Morgan has the green light. He does, but takes it high. Ball four. So Joe walks for the second time in the game, and that brings George Foster to the plate. Foster ended the first inning by grounding to reach at third base. Morgan with 13 stolen bases in 17 attempts this year. Waiting on Foster to settle in the batter's box. Still a good lead. Denny looking to Simmons has to sign the stretch. Goes over to first and Morgan back standing. And he's the stretch. Again a throw over there and again Morgan is back standing. Well, let's see if Joe gets a little bigger lead this time. He has his normal lead. One foot in the sliding pit, one on the turf. There he goes. The pitch taken. Simmons throw is not near in time and a good save by Gary Templeton. Backing up the play that went through Phillips and Gary Templeton made a diving stab to save it from going into center field. So Morgan gets his 14th stolen base of the year and only some good hustle by Gary Templeton keeps him from moving on to third base. The pitch to Foster was low and outside, and the count of ball, no strikes to George. And he the stretch. And the pitch, Foster takes it high and inside, and the count goes 2-0. Denny on the star of the game from St. Louis talking about hitting Foster. He hit Foster in the head and oh, he says I'm sorry for it but George really leans out over the plate and well you have to fess him up once in a while but certainly don't like to do that but you must let him know you're on the mound. The count Denny the stretch and the pitch curveball for a called strike two and one yeah. 
Pitch on the way. That's just off the plate outside. Three and one to Foster. In the last four or five ball games, we have watched some excellent pitching both sides here at Riverfront. Actually, it started Sunday in Pittsburgh when the Reds lost to the Pirates three to one, but good pitching. There's ball four outside. So the first two have reached here in the fourth inning. Dan Andreessen making his way to the plate and will pause for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. WLW Cincinnati. Attention new car buyers. Are you looking for economy and mileage? Then test drive Europe's most successful new car in history. The all new Fiesta at your greater Cincinnati and northern Kentucky Ford dealers today. Danny Dreesen at the plate. Morgan second, Foster first. The pitch. Dreesen takes it low and inside a ball. Danny grounded to Phillips at second base, leading off the second inning. Danny checking with Ted Simmons, his catcher. Sets, delivers. Dreesen swings and misses a curveball. He was right on that one. Not even one and one to Dreesen. Then he sets the pitch. Taken on the inside corner, called strike, and that brings the count to a ball, two strikes to Dreesen. Dave Concepcion on deck. Talking about the pitching in this homestand, the Monday night game with the Cubs, a three to two victory for Chicago, Russell, and Bonham in that one. Here's the one two low and inside count evens two balls two strikes and of course Tuesday night Freddie Norman and Doug Bear combined to shut out the Cubs one to nothing Two two delivery swung on bounce back to the mound to Templeton and on to Hernandez double play as Morgan moves to third base now the double play goes one to six to three Morgan moving to third Two away and Dave Concepcion the better. That's the 43rd double play the Reds have hit into this year. Davey in the second inning grounded to Mike Phillips at second base. Then he delivers. Concepcion takes it high and inside a ball. Morgan down the line at third. Then he looks over there, winds, and the pitch. Swung on and fouled, and the count evens one and one. A wall of strike the count to Concepcion. Dave with his 1,000th career base hit Wednesday afternoon. Takes from Denny Lowe and it's two and one. Denny back to the plate. Curve is swung on and bounced back to the mound. Denny has it on to Hernandez and that's the inning. So after the first two reads, we cannot get him anywhere. Morgan got to third, but that's it. For the Reds, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one runner left on base, and at the end of four, Cardinals nothing, Reds nothing. Well, the four inning totals are identical. The Cardinals no runs, no hits, one error. The Reds no runs, no hits, and one error. For St. Louis, Jerry Morales will lead it off in the fifth and back with the activities, Mr. Brenneman. Okay, Joe, Jerry Morales up in the second inning, struck out swinging one of three strikeouts that Tom Seaver has had so far tonight. Only thing the Cardinals have had remotely resembling a base hit was that ball that Hernandez hit in the fourth inning that Morgan made such a super play on to keep from going into right field and, of course, threw him out. So we've got a dandy going tonight through four innings. Here's Jerry Morales now to begin the fifth for St. Louis, and here's Sieber with the first pitch, and that's taken for... 
pitch on the way. Morales a slow bouncer. Third base side of the mound. Rose cuts it off and throwing high, but Dreesen is able to go up and get it and come back down on the bag to get Morales at first base. One down. We'll bring up Kenny Reitz. He was a base runner back in the second on a base on balls. Well, the trade deadline came and went at midnight last night. A number of deals made, but I don't think any that you could describe as major deals. Here's a pitch to Reitz. Pitches outside a ball. The San Francisco Giants, the most active of any of the major league clubs, they acquired Houston shortstop Roger Metzger for either player to be named later or cash. Swung on, fly ball. Get into right center field. Ken Griffey and Geronimo both there, and Geronimo will make the play. Two out. The Giants also picked up Jim Dwyer from this Cardinal team as part of a deal last fall that sent pitcher Frank Richelli to St. Louis. And the Giants acquired the contract of outfielder Hector Cruz from the Chicago Cubs for Lynn McLaughlin. Just talking with St. Louis sports writer Jack Herman a while ago and found out about a trade that I think may well have escaped a lot of people. I know it did us. Here's a pitch low for ball one. Ray Barris going from the Chicago Cubs to the Pittsburgh Pirates for left-hander Jerry Royce. Had no idea at all about that one. Here's a 1-0. Swung on and foul by Phillips. In other deals, the New York Yankees got Gary Thomason from the Oakland A's for outfielder Dell Alston and infielder Mickey Klutz. The Indians purchased Bernie Carbo from the Boston Red Sox for cash. 1-1 pitch, swung on, ground ball hit to first. Dreesen has it. He'll take it to the bag for the put out, and that's all for the Cardinals in the fifth inning. Three up and three down after four and a half. The Reds nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Well, through four and a half innings of play, there has not been a run. There has not been a base hit. Tom Seaver has pitched five hitless innings. John Denny has pitched four. It'll be Geronimo who drew the second inning walk to lead off of the Reds. And as the Chief settles into the batter's box, apparently getting something in his right eye because he quickly steps away from the plate. Kenny Reitz will play close at third for Geronimo as a pitch comes and it's a curveball at the knees for a strike. We we're ticking off those trades that were consummated before the midnight trade deadline last night. I mentioned the fact that the Indians purchased Bernie Carbo from the Boston Red Sox. Swung on, line drive, base hit center field. So Cesar Geronimo becomes the first man to reach on a base hit tonight as he lines a pitch up the middle, and that'll bring up Don Werner. The Indians traded Mike Vale to the Chicago Cubs for outfielder Joe Wallace. Then they turned around and traded Wallace to the Oakland A's for catcher designated hitter Gary Alexander Geronimo goes Werner fouls it off and in another National League trade the Philadelphia Phillies traded relief pitcher Gene Garber to the Atlanta Braves for right-handed pitcher Dick Ruthven nothing of a major nature here's a check swing by Don on a curveball one ball and one strike the Reds have Geronimo on, leading off the fifth inning with a base hit in this nothing-nothing game. Werner checking with third base coach Alex Grammas as he stands back in to await the pitching of John Denny. Here it comes. Swung on, base hit left field. Well, Denny got a curve ball up, and Donnie lined a single to left. So the first two men on are on here in the fifth inning with back-to-back -back singles from Geronimo and Werner, and you probably can expect what Tom Seaver is going to be up there doing. Seaver struck out in the third. Keith Hernandez went into the mound to talk with Denny, now moves on back to first. He's playing shallow, as is Ken Reitz at third base. Well, we need that all-important bunt from Tom now to get them both into scoring position, and the pitch is bunted foul as Hernandez and Reitz really come like gangbusters. Scoreboard stopper tonight. The Cardinals won the pennant in 1964, 1967, and 1968. Who managed those St. Louis teams? Two on, nobody out. 
Reds threatening in the fifth inning. Denny into his stretch. Seaver turns into bunt, takes it low and away, and it's one ball, one strike. Pete Rose, as you know, in the on-deck circle. Seaver looking down to Gramis at third, steps back in, and Hernandez really playing close in at first base. Here's a stretch in the pitch. Seaver takes it, and it's a strike. One and two the count. Of course, a trade that came about very early before the trade deadline. Raleigh Eastwood going to the Philadelphia Phillies from the New York Yankees for Jay Johnstone and minor league outfielder Bobby Brown. Seaver behind on the count, and he bunts foul, and that's a strikeout. So Denny picks up a big one as Seaver is not able to move the runners along. And with one down, Pete Rose will step to the plate as Denny now comes into the plate to talk with the plate umpire, Terry Tata, and now is running over and into the St. Louis Cardinals dugout. So apparently we're going to have a hold up in the action here as Denny is heading down to the Cardinal dressing room for some reason or other. And we've got a break in the action here in the fifth inning, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. Well, we're back here at Riverfront Stadium, still waiting the return of John Denny from the St. Louis Cardinal Clubhouse. Apparently, something went amiss in terms of his uniform that caused him to go to the plate umpire, Terry Tata, and request permission to go on to the clubhouse and correct whatever the problem was. And when we resume play, we'll have Geronimo at second, Donnie Werner still at first base, and now one out after Sieber, trying to bunt, ended up striking out. Updating some scores in the American League. Toronto and Texas playing a twin bill in Arlington, Texas tonight. And at the end of eight in game one, the Rangers hold a 3-2 to two lead. Rico Carty hit a two-run homer to account for the only Toronto runs. Cleveland over Milwaukee, 4-1 at the end of four and a half innings of play. Heisel a home run for Milwaukee. Grubb a three-run shot for the Indians. Baltimore on an Eddie Murray. Fourth inning home run, one nothing over Oakland. California with two in the first inning and a 2-0 lead at the end of two innings against the Yankees. Boston shutting out Seattle at the end of three, three to nothing. Red Sox are trying to chalk up their eighth consecutive victory and send Seattle down to their ninth straight loss. Other games not yet underway. Kansas City at Chicago. It'll be Larry Gura against Francisco Barrios. Detroit at Minnesota. And of course, Toronto and Texas will be playing the second game. In the National League, Pittsburgh six, Atlanta nothing at the end of two and a half. Chicago scoreless in the top of the first at Houston. Meanwhile, we're still waiting for John Denny to come back to the pitching mound. Marty, I'll be back. It takes a little while to make that particular equipment change. Well, we'll just you don't do that. Like putting a new shoelace in. You understand? I understand uh, very well. And Mr. Denny is now coming up the stairwell. Okay. Wasn't all that long. No. I just hope he carried a couple base hits out of there for us. Well, we hope so. <laughs> I don't think John's a very popular person right now. The crowd greeting him with a chorus of boos as he goes back to the mound. So. Let's see what Pete can do now with two on and one out. The Reds got their first two on in the fourth inning on walks to Morgan and Foster and couldn't score when Dreesen hit into a double play and Concepcion bounced back to the mound. Rose 0 for 2 is bounced to first is grounded out to second base. Here's Denny with a pitch and Rose takes it for a strike at the letters on the outside corner. Denny to the belt. There go the runners. Pitch swung on. Line drive. Base hit left center field. One run is going to score. They're going to wave the runner Werner around third. He's coming to the plate. Templeton's throw. Not in time. A two-run double by Pete. The ball gets through Simmons and Rose goes to third. Well, the ball hit Donnie Werner as Gary Templeton's throw came to the plate. They've charged an error against Ted Simmons. Marty, 
the ball actually hit Don Warner as he crossed the plate, and uh, I don't know. It, of course, uh, we're not the official scorers, but usually when something like that happens, the player that throws the ball is charged. But the ball did hit Don Warner as he really was a step across home plate, and Ted Simmons had no chance at all to field the ball. He was behind Warner, Warner crossing in front of him, and the, the throw striking done. So Pete getting a two-run double and going to third on an error charge to Simmons. Here is Griffey as the Cardinal infield comes in. It's ball one. So the Reds lighting this crowd up at Riverfront as the runners were both going, Geronimo and Warner, and Pete lined a double into the gap in left center with both scoring. High with a pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Kenny is grounded to the mound hard and was thrown out by Templeton at shortstop in the third inning. Hernandez, Phillips, Templeton, and Reitz all playing in. Rose is at third base. Two runs have been scored as the Reds have reached Denny for three hits in the fifth. The pitch to Griffey swung on and looped down the left field line. That's going to be a foul ball into the seats. So Pete coming up with a big two-run double. And now Griffey trying to get Rose in from third as he stands out of the batter's box. Denny waiting out on the mound for the hitter to get back in there. Two and one to count. Denny staring in for the sign from Simmons. He picks it up and he pitches. Griffey fouls it to the screen. Hardy, something kind of interesting. I know Pete was uh, talking about RBIs uh, Wednesday in the clubhouse, and that's his first RBI since May the 27th in San Diego. Wow. A long time between drinks of water for Rose. They gives him a total of 21 runs batted in. Griffey takes strike three. Fastball in on him. That can't be right. We're going to look at that one more time. That's a third strikeout for Denny, and two of them have come here in the inning. It brings up Joe Morgan, who's walked twice. The Reds Radio Network brings Reds baseball to fans in seven states, and you can hear the games in Ironton, Ohio, on WIRO, in Kokomo, Indiana, on WIOU, in Jamestown, Kentucky, on WJRS, and in Bluefield, West Virginia, on WHIS. Two runs in, two men out. The Cardinal infield now falls back as Denny comes to Morgan. Joe swings and pulls it foul into the Cincinnati dugout. We'll retract that statement and say he had two RBIs on the 31st of May against the Braves in Atlanta. Still 16 days. Sounds a little better. A little bit. Two days better. <laughs> Morgan takes a curve in the dirt as Simmons goes to both knees to block it. One ball, one strike. Now Denny throwing that baseball in and apparently on the request of Morgan, Terry Tato looks it over and throws it on back to the mound. Denny has worked carefully to Joe tonight, so much so that he's walked him twice. Here's a pitch. That's low, and it's two balls and one strike. Denny glancing to third, where Rose has his lead, pitches a curve low, ball three, so he's a pitch away from issuing a third straight walk to Joe Morgan. Ground ball, fair down the right field line. Heath Hernandez diving to try and stop it. The run is in. Morgan comes to second, head first with a double, and it's three to nothing. Three runs in on four base hits. Morgan hitting a rocket down the first baseline, and I'll tell you, give Keith Hernandez a lot of credit because he went all out to try and come up with a ball as it shot by him. With Rose scoring, Joe is now at second, and here is George Foster. Check swing a ball. They've got a left-hander now beginning to throw in the Cardinals' bullpen, Buddy Schultz. Foster shoots one to deep right field, but it's a foul ball. Now well, the answer to the scoreboard stumper, the manager of the Cardinals, 
or the managers of the Cardinals when they won three pennants in the 60s. Johnny Keene in 1964, Red Shane Deans piloted the Cardinal clubs when they won it in 67 and 68. Jack of Morgan, the pitch to Foster. Swung on, slow ground ball to third. Reitz has it. Here's his throw to first base. That ends the inning. But a most profitable fifth for Cincinnati. Three runs, four hits, one Arab, one left. After five, the Reds lead the Cardinals three to nothing. Well, we were talking the other night about the Cincinnati Reds tryout camps. Now underway throughout Reds country. Tomorrow, Gene Bennett. Red scouting supervisor will be at Indianapolis, Indiana at Bush Stadium for a tryout camp beginning at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Here's a pitch to Denny. Swung on, fly ball right field. Griffey drifting back. He's under, and he makes a catch. This coming Monday, the Reds will hold a tryout camp in Paintsville, Kentucky at Johnson Central High School beginning at 10 o'clock. Chet Montgomery will oversee that tryout camp on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday in Lexington, Kentucky at Chilato Park at 10 o'clock. Chet Montgomery will be there. And on Wednesday, June the 21st in Bedford, Indiana, Wilson Park, 10 o'clock Reds tryout camp with Gene Bennett. And the same day at Somerset, Kentucky at Meese Middle School at 10 o'clock. And Chet Montgomery will be there conducting that one. Here's Gary Templeton ball, or Lou Brock rather, ball one. Seaver delivers, Brock swings and fouls. Now, the general information that those of you need to know who are planning to attend these tryout camps, the camps are for boys 16 to 22. High school sophomores and juniors are certainly urged to attend. Two balls and a strike on Brock. Players are requested to furnish their personal gear, shoes, uniform, and glove. The Reds will provide the bats and balls. Brock, 2-1 pitch, taken high and inside, 3-1. And all American Legion players must have written approval from their Legion coach or post commander in compliance with the American Legion rule. Brock looks at a strike and the count goes full. We will be continuing to update you on tryout camps coming up that the Reds will be conducting throughout Reds country in the coming couple of weeks. Brock with a high fly ball, back of third, foul ground, Foster in the Cardinal bullpen. He's got a play and he makes a catch. Away, and the batter will be Gary Templeton. Don't forget All-Star balloting is now underway and will run through the 2nd of July. Be sure to cast your All-Star vote this year. Ballots are available right here at Riverfront at all Reds ticket agencies and at most stores where Gillette products are sold. The latest release on the American League balloting from All-Star election headquarters has come in. Templeton takes a strike on the inside corner. Will be ticking down the leaders by position in the American League All-Star voting. This is a fly ball off the left field line and out of play. Be doing that in the next half inning. Right now we're two outs into the Cardinals sixth inning and the Reds lead in this game three to nothing. Three runs, four hits, an error for Cincinnati. No runs, no hits, and two errors for the Cardinals. Seaver back behind the mound, rubbing up the baseball as he now comes back on top. Templeton has bounced a short fly to deep left field. He's behind and awaiting the two-strike pitch. And he pops it up back of the plate. Let's see if Warner has a play on it. Donnie's at the base of the screen, makes a catch. That's the inning. Three up, three down after five and a half. The Reds three, the Cardinals nothing. After this weekend, the Reds will be on the road for two weeks before returning home in late June, then get set for a lot of baseball here. 21 big games in a 30-day stretch. Check out the schedule and order your tickets in advance by mail. Box seats are $5, reserve seats $4. Send check or money order payable to Cincinnati Reds, Box 1970 Cincinnati, and please include 50 cents with each order for postage and handling. Danny Dreesen leading off the bottom of the six. The first pitch is high for a ball. Takes that slow John Denny curve that is in for a call strike. Danny is grounded out twice, hit into a double play in the fourth inning on a comebacker to the mound. Another curve ball, but this one stays up and away. Two balls and a strike. Red sending seven batters to the plate in the fifth inning and scored three times on four hits. Fastball up and in, ball three, three and one. Three.
Greason hits a drive to deep right field. Way back and right, and it's out of here. Home run. Danny jumping on a high 3-1 fastball for his ninth home run of the season. And the Reds have tacked another run on their lead. It's 4 nothing. So Denny, hitless baseball he threw through the first four innings, and the Reds have now started to really zero in on him. Here's David. He takes a strike. He's also bounced out twice. Denny just starting to get that ball up just a little bit, and the Reds are making him pay for it. That's a high and inside fastball, one and one. Check swing on a pitch inside. Two balls and a strike. We're talking about that American League All-Star boating. Freddie Potek has moved into a tentative starting spot along with seven first-week leaders. Ball three, three and one. They are Carlton Fisk, Rod Carew, Willie Randolph, George Brett, Jim Rice, Reggie Jackson, and Carl Yastrzemski. Closest race. Races involve Potek, Bert Campanaris, and Rick Burleson at shortstop. Brett and Craig Nettles at third base. Here's a high chopper to shortstop. Templeton throwing on to Hernandez. Out. One down. And in the outfield with Freddie Lynn and Richie Zisk challenging the leaders. Carew is a top American League boat getter at the current time with 683,427. This is the latest release on the American League All-Star results. The National League battling results will be announced 6.30 Monday night. And we'll have the results of the latest National League balloting Tuesday night from San Francisco. Geronimo looks at a strike. Cesar started us off in the sixth inning with a leadoff single. Taken high and inside. One ball, one strike. nothing Cincinnati the Reds batting in the sixth recent is homered Concepcion is bounced out and Denny deals Geronimo a curve for a strike one ball and two strikes on the red center fielder inside and high as he spins him around with that fastball pitch on the way Geronimo swings bounces towards second Phillips on to Hernandez, two down. Just a reminder, Ken Griffey poster day comes up Sunday afternoon as the Reds and the Cardinals close out this current homestand. Everybody, 21 and under, gets a free full-color poster of the Red Star right fielder. Donnie Warner, like Geronimo, in the last inning, a base hit and a run scored. Strike is called. So the leaders in the American League by position, Carlton Fisk of Boston behind the plate, Minnesota's Rod Carew at first base. High and inside, one and one. At second, the Yankees' Willie Randolph. At third, George Brett of Kansas City. Shortstop, Kansas City's Fred Patek swung on and foul back. And the top three boat getters in the outfield once again, Jim Rice of Boston, Reggie Jackson of New York, and Carl Yastrzemski of Boston. Freddie Lynn of the Red Sox is fourth, so Boston has three of the top four boat getters in the outfield. Werner takes a curve low, two and two. Talking about Ken Griffey, we've got the Ken Griffey fan club from Denora, Pennsylvania, Kenny's hometown here tonight. High and inside, and the count is full on Werner. Greason opened the inning with a home run to right. Werner fouls off the 3-2 pitch. Reds in front of the Cardinals 4 to nothing in the series opener at Riverfront Stadium. Tomorrow afternoon, it'll be Bill Bonham against Pete Bukovic. Here's a shot pull foul to left field. Seaver 
Watching the action from the on deck circle. Pay off again to Warner. He grounds to third. Good feeling Kenny Reitz on to first. That's the inning. The Reds get one more run on one more hit. Dreesen's ninth of the year. And at the end of six full, the Reds over the Cardinals four to nothing. Seaver standing down behind the mound. Waiting on Hendricks to step into the batter's box. Now Tom up onto the mound and onto the pitching rubber and gets the sign from Don Warner. He winds and his first pitch, Hendricks swings on it and pops it up. Joe Morgan calling for it at second. Waiting and he has it one out. One away and uh, Ted Simmons the batter. Ted 0 for 2 has grounded a short and a fly ball to Geronimo in center field. Warner out to the mound to have a short talk with Tom Seaver. Warner hangs the sign. Seaver delivers. Simmons swings. Ground ball. Morgan has it on a bounce. And on to Dreesen. Two away. Two down. And that'll bring Keith Hernandez to the plate. And Keith walked in the second. Was out on a fine play by Morgan in the fourth inning. Joe going off to his left to field the hard ground ball off the bat of Hernandez. The pitch, Hernandez takes it outside, a ball. Tom into the line, kicks and delivers. Swung on and missed, got him with a high breaking ball. Like a high slider up and in, and it's even at one and one. Seaver has the sign. And the 1-1 one -one delivery. Up high and off the mid of Don Warner. Count two balls, one strike to Keith Hernandez. Now the 2-1. Fast ball swung on, hit off the glove of Seaver. Up with the ball, Concepcion got him. Oh, we get a break there as Tom reach for the ball. I don't know whether they hit him on a glove or on the leg, but right to Concepcion, and Davey threw him out easily. So, Keith Hernandez really has been robbed of two base hits here tonight, but we'll take him. So, the Cardinals in the seventh. Nothing across. That play goes one to six to three. And at the middle of the seventh, Reds four, Cardinals nothing. The Reds in the seventh, Tom Seaver to lead it off, then Pete Rose and Ken Griffey. Tom has been up twice in the game and has struck out both times, struck out in the third inning and then in the fifth, trying to bunt with two strikes. He fouled the ball for his second strikeout. The Reds have had five hits of Denny and four of those hits coming in the fifth inning when they scored three of their runs in the fifth hit of the game. For the Reds was Dan Dreesen's ninth home run of the year. All right, Seaver to plate, and he takes the first pitch high of ball. delivery Tom looks at a curve that's down low and it's two balls no strike not field straight away then he delivers Seaver takes ball three Buddy Schultz throwing in the Cardinal bullpen and it really looks like John Denny is about had it he is ringing wet and been up with a lot of pitches the last couple of innings 
Seaver looks ball four. That fastball just out of the strike zone high. So Tom moves on to first base. That's the fourth walk issued by John Denny and Pete Rose the batter. Ray Knight loosening in the Cincinnati bullpen and he will go to third base in the top of the eighth inning. Waiting on Seaver to put on his windbreaker. Tom just now arriving at first base. Pete with a big hit in the game. That two run double in the fifth inning. A ball to left center field was cut off by George Hendrick, but Geronimo and Warner running. Pitch to Rose, swung on. That's lined to right field, a base hit. Seaver on to second base, holds right there. So Pete with two shots, his last two times up. Hit number six for the Reds, and here comes Ken Boyer. And that might well be it for John Denny as Griffey and Morgan are due up next. And going to the mound, looking down to the Cardinal bullpen where Buddy Schultz, the left-hander, is throwing. Mark Littell, a right-hander, heads to the Cardinal bullpen to start throwing as Buddy Schultz is called in from the bullpen. So we'll have a break in the action here at Riverfront Stadium. The Reds leading the Cardinals by a score of 4 to nothing. We'll be back after this work. New pitcher on the mound for the Cardinals, left-hander Buddy Schultz. Buddy making his 20th appearance of the year. He has a 4-11 earned run average. He's all in one in a loss, one loss department. 35 innings, he has allowed 28 hits, has struck out 29, has walked 19. So John Denny leaves after working six plus innings, allowing the Reds six hits, striking out three, walking four, four runs, all of them earned. It'll be Ken Griffey when Schultz completes his warm ups. Kenny 0 for 3 tonight, bounced hard back to Denny in the first inning, grounded to short in the third, was called out on strikes in the fifth. Joe, we meant to point it up earlier tonight, the fact that the Atlanta Braves had signed their number one draft choice, Arizona State third baseman Bob Horner, who set an NCAA record this season at Arizona State with 25 home runs. He started at third base for the Braves tonight. Bob Horner hit his first major league home run in the sixth inning with one man on base in his first third at bat in the major leagues. Very interesting. The launching pad. All right, Schultz completes his warm-ups, and Kenny Griffey at the plate with Seaver at second base, Rose at first, nobody out. The pitch to Kenny tries to bunt third base side, but fouls it off to the Cardinal dugout. <laughs> Kenny hitting 324 right now, came into the game at 328. The Reds leading it four to nothing, scoring three times in the fifth, one in the sixth on Dan Dreesen's ninth home run of the year. Schultz the stretch. And the pitch. Grief Griffey tries to bunt again and fouls again off to the Cardinal dugout. On to the count. Seaver at second, Rose at first. No balls, two strikes. The count to Ken Griffey. Joe Morgan on deck. Buddy Schultz. Checking with Simmons and the stretch. The 0-2. High and inside, and Griffey has to get out of there in a hurry. The count one and two. Field shaded a bit toward right for Ken. All right, the one two delivery swung on ground ball and Phillips to Templeton to Hernandez a double play. The second the Cardinals have turned in tonight, moving on to third base is Tom Seaver. Play going four to six to three. That uh, Taylor made double play. No problems at all with that one. So Seaver now at third base with two away and Joe Morgan the batter. 
Joe has reached all three times up tonight. He walked in the first, walked in the fourth, stole second, and doubled in a run in the fifth. Morgan swings and fouls. Schultz first pitch, 0-1. Schultz working from the stretch position. Sets the 0-1. Morgan takes it just low. Now evens a ball a strike. One delivery swung on hit off the end of the bat to Templeton charging it short running through got him close play and Ron Plaza not happy with Paul Pryor's call the first base umpire but it'll stand so the Reds in the inning no runs they get a hit there were no arrows a runner left on base and at the end of seven cards nothing Reds four Go to the top of the eighth inning as the St. Louis Cardinals get set to come to the plate, and they'll be sending up Jerry Morales, Kenny Reitz, and Mike Phillips. The Reds scoring three times in the fifth inning and once in the sixth. They've had a total of six base hits with an error. The Cardinals with no runs on no base hits, and they have committed two errors. Jerry Morales up in the second, struck out swinging. In the fifth inning, he bounced out to third. And talking about third base, Ray Knight has now gone in at that position, replacing Pete Rose. Right-handed batting, Cardinal right fielder. Morales steps in as Seaver looks into Donnie Warner. The right-hander winds and delivers. Morales takes it outside, ball one. Outfield shading the right-handed batter toward right field or the other way. The 1-0 pitch swung on and popped up off of first base, but that'll be out of play as it drops well back behind the Cincinnati dugout. Count evens to Morales. One ball, one strike. In the Cardinal on deck circle is third baseman Kenny Reitz. Seaver readies himself for the 1-1 pitch. Morales takes it outside and low ball two, two and one. Give you the pitching line on John Denny in just a moment. Here's a pitch to Morales, swung on high chop, third base side. Ray Knight up with a ball, quick throw to first, got him at first base. Close play and a good play by Ray Knight. Ray Knight coming off the bench, replacing Pete Rose at third and being tested right out of the chute as Morales at a high chop. Knight charged, stopped quickly, played it on the bounce, and threw a strike to Dreesen to get Jerry by a half step at first base. One away in the eighth inning. Here's Kenny Reitz in. Seaver to the plate, and Reitz takes a high and away fastball. Kenny on in the second with a walk. He fly to center in the fifth. Seaver starts to the wind, now stops, walks down toward the front slope of the mound, and now back pedals on top of the pitching rubber. The outfield for Reitz is straight away. Seaver's 1-0. Kenny grounds to third. Knight has it with no problem. Plenty of time. Out number two. The batter will be second baseman Mike Phillips. Seaver has gotten the first two hitters out in the eighth inning. Morales and Reitz on ground balls to third base. Mike Phillips has bounced to Morgan. He has grounded out to Dreesen. Danny saying something to Tom to get the pitcher's attention. Seaver now redirects his attentions back to the plate and the left-handed batting Phillips. Here's the pitch, and he checks his swing on a high fastball. On deck now for the Cardinals to bat for Buddy Schultz is Jerry Mumphrey. Seaver and the one out of the plate. Phillips takes it high and tight. Two balls and no strikes. We are in the eighth inning. The Reds lead the Cardinals four to nothing. Seaver behind and pitching the 2-0 to Phillips. That is low and away. Ball three. So Tom, who has not allowed 
a cardinal base runner since the walk to reach in the second inning has fallen behind to Phillips three and nothing with Mumphrey slated to pinch hit for Buddy Schultz on deck. Seaver kicks and fires and Phillips takes a fastball for a strike. Three balls, one strike on the Cardinals' second baseman. Seaver quickly back to the plate. Phillips swings and fouls off left side and out of play. Strike two, full count. Ray Knight had started quickly across the foul line, but saw just as quickly that he had no play on the ball. Geronimo shading Phillips a bit toward right. Foster straight away and shallow in left field. Griffey straight away and right. Swung on and a fly ball hit to left field. A routine play for Foster. That's the third out of the eighth. The Cardinals are up and down in order. Before the Reds come to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. WLW, Cincinnati. Ken Griffey Poster Day is Sunday afternoon at Riverfront Stadium. The Reds meet the Cardinals, and every fan through age 21 gets a free souvenir color poster of the popular Reds right fielder. Be on hand. Buddy Schultz back to the mound as the Reds come calling in the bottom of the eighth inning, and it's going to be George Foster to lead it off. George has bounced to third, drawn a base on balls, and grounded out to third base again. The Reds leading four to nothing as attention has really started to mount here at Riverfront Stadium because Tom Seaver will be taking a no-hitter into the ninth inning. Foster slowly leveling the bat as Schultz checks in with his battery mate Ted Simmons. The left-hander to the plate, Foster with a foul of the screen, strike one. Cincinnati providing Tom Seaver with a run production, although being limited to only six hits tonight by Cardinal starter John Denny. Foster swings at a slow breaking ball, and he's behind at two strikes. Denny went six-plus, allowing four runs, all of them earned, on six hits. He struck out three and walked five. A count of two strikes on Foster with Dreesen and Concepcion to follow. Now Schultz goes to the rising bag. The left-hander kicks and fires. Foster swings and just ticks it foul to stay alive and keep the count at 0-2. In the Cardinal ninth inning, if Kenny Boyer stays with how he would have gone, had Phillips gotten on with two out on the eighth, Jerry Mumphrey would be the pinch hitter for Schultz, then Lou Brock, and then Gary Templeton. Foster waiting the two-strike pitch once again. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. Schultz struck him out with a good fastball down. One away. And Buddy picks up his first strikeout. Here's Danny Dreesen. He knocked in the fourth Cincinnati run with a leadoff sixth inning home run, his ninth of the year. Danny won for three. Morales back deep in right field. As left-hander delivers to the left-handed batter, the fastball is just high. Ball one. In the sixth inning in Atlanta, Pittsburgh leading the Braves 7-2. to two. In the third in Houston, well, we can update that. At the end of four in Houston, it's the Cubs 2 and the Astros 2. Treason with a check swing foul ball. Off third base, down around the Cardinal bullpen. It's one ball, one strike. Baby Concepcion will follow Danny Dreesen to the plate. Reds leading 4-0 in the eighth inning. The pitch swung on and fouled out of play. Danny going after a high fastball and fouling it back into the upper deck. One and two on the Reds' first baseman. Schultz toes the line. Winds and delivers. Dreesen takes it low and inside. The fastball that Schultz wanted for strike three, he did not get. And the count evens at two balls and two strikes. One gone in the Cincinnati half of the eighth. There's a curve low and away, ball three. 
Three and two the count. The crowd here at Riverfront right now very quiet and very expectant. And looking forward to what we hope will unfold in the Cardinal ninth inning. Dreesen swings at a curve and that's a strikeout. As Schultz got a breaking ball in on him. And with two away, here is a shortstop, Davy Concepcion. Davy has grounded a second, bounced to the box, and bounced out to shortstop. 0 for 3. The big blow in this game, back in that three run fifth inning, was a two run double by Pete Rose after Geronimo and Werner had singles. Sieber had struck out. Strike call. Sparky Anderson had both runners on the move when Rose lined a double to left center field scoring both Geronimo and Werner. Pete went to third when Ted Simmons was charged with an error. The ball getting through on the throw from the cutoff man Gary Templeton. Now Buddy Schultz walking in toward the Cardinal dugout apparently on a very humid night having problems with moisture on his glasses and now being met at the third base foul line by the Cardinal bat boy to wipe him off. After that two run double by Rose Griffey struck out but Morgan doubled down the right field line making it three to nothing before Foster bounced out to end the inning and then Dreesen let off the sixth inning with his ninth home run of the season to right field. That has been the extent of the run production. Two down in the eighth for Cincinnati nobody aboard the 0 1 to Concepcion taken high one ball and one strike. Buddy Schultz in relief of John Denny the starting pitcher sends in the break even pitch and took something off of it but missed high two balls and a strike. Cardinal outfield Brock Hendrick Morales straight away. Davy takes low and there's ball three three and one. It was exactly two months ago tonight that Bob Forsh no hit the Philadelphia Phillies for the Cardinal Club four to nothing. Here's a line drive in the right field base hit. Davey with an opposite field single the seventh base hit for Cincinnati and that'll bring up Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo on the evening one for two a walk a single a run scored he's grounded out to second. First base hit off Buddy Schultz David will take his lead against a holding Hernandez as Geronimo checks his swing on a curveball in the dirt. Schultz constantly going to the rosin bag. Now the stretch the check of the runner and the 1 0 nope the throw to first base and Davey steps quickly back. 1 0 the count and now the throw back to the mound gets away from Schultz who runs over toward third base to pick it up Davey of course having no intention of going anywhere at all. Schultz ready to go to work again against Geronimo. Concepcion goes, pitch is swung on, hit to center field. There's Hendrick, and he makes a catch to end the inning. So for the Reds in the eighth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the ninth inning. As Tom Seaver starts slowly back toward the mound, he gets a standing ovation here at Riverfront. Stay with us. At the end of eight, the Reds four, the Cardinals nothing. Well, we're in the top of the ninth inning. As we mentioned, Tom Seaver received a standing ovation as he left the Cincinnati dugout and slowly made his way out toward the mound. Seaver has pitched eight no-hit innings against the St. Louis Cardinals, so he will be going to the ninth inning for the fourth time in his illustrious Major League career with a no-hitter. His closest brush with a no-hitter coming in 1975 against Chicago with two outs and two strikes on Joe Wallace who just yesterday was traded off the Cubs ball club. Wallace got a base hit. It's going to be Jerry Mumphrey to lead it off. 
the same man who was on deck in the eighth inning when Seaver got Mike Phillips on a fly ball to left field. Ray Knight is playing in shallow at third. The left-handed batting Mumphrey waiting on Seaver. The pitch is taken high, ball one. Seaver does not have to worry about the score. The Reds have scored four times for him tonight. His 1-0 to Jerry Mumphrey is up, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. 38,216 on hand tonight. And Seaver three outs away from his first no-hitter. The 2-0 pitch. That's high, ball three. Mumphrey batting 174. He is one for four as a Cardinal pinch hitter. He takes a strike. On deck is Lou Brock. Sieber rocks to the wind. The 3-1 pitch is outside, ball four. And Jerry Mumphrey becomes the first Cardinal base runner since Kenny Reitz drew a second inning base on balls. 19 consecutive Cardinal batters had been retired between bases on balls. I don't think you could blame Tom Seaver for at this point being a wee bit nervous. That base on balls to Mumphrey will get Doug Bear starting to throw in the Cincinnati bullpen. Here is Lou Brock. He's bounced out twice and flied out foul to left field. He checks his swing and that's a strike. Seaver with Mumphrey at first comes back to Brock and he misses high and the count evens at one ball and one strike. Gary Templeton will be up next. Knight is even and a step or two inside the bag at third. Concepcion and Morgan at double play depth. Dreesen off the bag and behind the runner Mumphrey at first. The outfield shading Brock toward left. The 1-1. One -one. That's high. Two balls and a strike. Seaver has walked pinch hitter Jerry Mumphrey. He is behind a Lou Brock at two and one. He pauses, he pitches. Swung on, looped down the left field line. That's going to be a foul ball and falls untouched in the Cardinal bullpen. Foster couldn't get it. Ray Knight and Davey Concepcion going back, they couldn't get it. So you level the count on Lou Brock at two balls and two strikes. Mumphrey goes back to first base. Seaver with five career one hitters has never thrown a no hit baseball game. He is in the ninth inning right now with Mumphrey at first through a walk nobody out and a no hitter working against the Cardinals at 2 2 to Brock. He fouls it back on a late swing. Tom has certainly not been overpowering tonight as we saw him exhibit in St. Louis two starts ago when five of the last six outs were strikeouts. He's fanned only three batters, the last being Hendrick leading off the fourth inning. He's ready now with a 2-2 to Brock. That is fouled out of play. And the veteran Cardinal left fielder himself hoping to reach the 3,000 hit mark in 1978 as Pete Rose has done earlier hanging in against Seaver with a holding two and two count. Bear is throwing in the bullpen. Seaver back on the pitching rubber. Brock out away from the plate, making Tom wait a moment longer on the mound. And now the staccato clapping starts up at Riverfront among the 38,216. Brock levels the bat. Seaver with a slow come down to the belt, the pitch, and a bouncer foul toward the Cincinnati dugout and in. Tom now pacing around behind the mound as he rubs up the new baseball provided by plate umpire Terry Tata. Brock steps back in. Donnie Warner hangs a sign. The stretch, the kick, and the pitch. A fly ball hit back into left field. Foster is there. He's got it. One out. Seaver two outs away. As Brock flies to left, and the batter will be Gary Templeton, the Cardinal shortstop. This young man always a threat because of his outstanding speed. 
He has grounded a short, fly to deep left field, and popped up in foul ground to Werner. Knight is shallow at third. The pitch to Templeton inside. And low ball one. You've got speed at first base and Jerry Mumphrey and blistering speed at the plate and Gary Templeton. It would be very tough to double him up. Seavers 1-0 to the plate, and that swung on and missed. A fastball up and away, and Templeton could not get it. 1-1. One one. Knight now about even with a bag at third, but creeping in slowly as Seaver comes back to Templeton. Bouncing ball, shortstop. Concepcion. Morgan will hold the throw at second base as they get the force out on Mumphrey. Two away in the Cardinal ninth inning, and Seaver is one out away. The batter is George Hendrick as they start to their feet here at Riverfront Stadium. Seaver, one out away from the first no-hitter of his major league career and what would be the 14th in the long history of the Cincinnati Reds. George Hendrick, big, strong, right-handed batter, has gone hitless in three times. He has struck out once. Seaver pitches. Hendrick takes a strike. Now the crowd begins to roar with every pitch. Mumphrey has been forced at second. Templeton, the runner at first, two out. The strike one pitch coming to Hendrick. He swings and pops it foul, but it's going to be out of play as Donnie Warner runs to the near end of the Cincinnati dugout, and it falls back in the stand. Strike two. There has never been a no-hit game pitched by a Cincinnati Reds pitcher here at Riverfront. The last Reds no-hitter thrown was back on the 30th of April, 1969, by Jim Maloney at Crosley Field. He no-hit the Houston Astros 10 to nothing. Seaver is a strike away. He stretches. He checks the runner. He pitches. He pitches high a fastball, and it's one and two. They are standing all over the ballpark. Hendrick waiting on Seaver's 1-2 pitch. Tom sets. He kicks and fires. He pops it up, and it's going to be out of play, directly back of the plate. So Tom Seaver now a strike away from his first major league no-hitter. The Reds leading it 4 to nothing in the ninth inning. Hendrick puts ahead of the bat on the plate. Werner hangs a sign. Seaver with a pause, the check and the pitch. He bounces to first base. Dreesen has it. He goes to the bag and seaver has got it. Tom Seaver has pitched his first major league no-hitter. And this one belongs to the Reds. Seaver is being mobbed at first base as George Hendrick bounces a routine two-hopper to Danny Dreesen and the 38,216 at Riverfront Stadium are standing. Tom Seaver has thrown the first no-hitter of his major league career, the 14th no-hitter in the long history of the Cincinnati Reds, and he did it in almost routine fashion tonight. He throws his hat high over his head, acknowledging the applause and the recognition of this crowd at Riverfront Stadium. Tom Seaver has thrown the second no-hit, no-run game. In the National League in 1978, Bob Forrest did it two months ago to the very day when he no-hit the Philadelphia Phillies 4 to nothing, and Tom Seaver has no-hitted the St. Louis Cardinals here tonight against the crowd here, a tremendous crowd, and Seaver winning it 4 to nothing, his first Major League no-hitter, and what a ball game.